Hey, what's up guys? I am Joe from Workbench, and this is a quick tip video for people that are new to animation. So let's get right to it. So the first mistake that new animators make is that they think that one second is a long time. Every animation, when you start out, you're making it like a second, and a second is forever. So you might think this first one is actually a good speed, and it's not bad, but the second one is just much more impactful. It comes in, it slams in, you're kind of like, oh, what happened? You don't really want to have like your audience see exactly what you did. Animation is kind of like magic in a way in that you don't want people to see your sleight of hand motions as you're animating something on screen. You don't want to give everything away because then it's kind of boring. So the next point, use easing. So if you're unfamiliar with what easing is, it's basically acceleration versus like speed. Acceleration and easing are how speed changes over time. So as you end your motion, you can slow it down gradually or you can speed it up as you start the motion. It's a good way to give objects mass and inertia. So the first one just kind of goes off and then comes back. Second one has a little bit of easing in and out. The third one has a lot of easing in and easing out using ease and whiz. Now, if you really want to tweak this, you can click here and click here. You don't actually have to click this. Um, that just makes sure that it shows if you have something else selected. So if you go over here and click that, it'll show you both. If you have an expression like ease and whiz, it's going to show up like this, which is actually not what it's doing. So what you want to do is go down here and it'll show the post expression graph. So you can actually see kind of what shape it's going to make. All right, so I'm going to turn that off and I'm going to go back here and I'm going to turn that off. It turns that on automatically when you click the other one. And you can pull out these handles and kind of make that shape. So as you can see, it's going to slow down when it gets to the right. It's kind of like how a falling ball works or anything with gravity. It holds at the top a little bit. Okay, the next mistake I see, and it's a little bit of my personal uh, preference. I don't really use motion blur, like hardly ever. Um, some people use it and it's okay. I mean, you can see it's it's all right. And you can change up the samples and stuff so that it doesn't like get too faded up in here. Um, but unless I'm matching something to actual footage that has motion blur in it, I don't really use it. This is what it looks like. That's with it on, that's when it's on on something faster, and that's with it off. I kind of like the more traditional animation approach of just it moving out and coming back in. For a lot of things back in the day, nobody really drew in like motion blur as their keyframes, and your eye kind of makes it up anyway. The next big mistake I see a lot of new people make is that they tend to fade everything in, but not everything needs a fade. And this isn't just animators. A lot of times new editors will just like to put dissolves all over everything and it, you could just use a straight cut. In an animation, it works the same way. Fading in things kind of calls attention to, hey, this wasn't here a second ago. A lot of times something more abrupt is actually smoother. So let me show you real quick. So that one fades up. Scale up is nice, but look at that. Just up works too. Sometimes you can just pop it on and move it. It looks fine. If you don't, scale it up or do something else more clever. And even if you're scaling, you don't have to start from zero. This one does, but you can start at 20. See, that looks fine. Your brain and the persistence of vision will kind of merge those things together and it'll look smooth, especially if there's a quick move or something right after it. All right, the next big thing that people don't do is naming their layers and using labels. Right here, I have all of my background stuff set to a none label so that I know it's not to be touched in this thing. Everything I'm working on right now is green. I have everything named. My pre-comps, everything is all organized. Keep organized and you'll work faster. People are gonna make changes on the stuff that you're working on. And six months from now, if you don't have things named, it's gonna mess you up. No excuses, just do it. If it works for Nike, it'll work for you. All right, the next helpful tip is to pre-comp things. You might already do it for organization, but there are other benefits too. For example, if you pre-comp things and you have multiple copies, After Effects only needs to render one instance in most cases. So that'll actually save you render time. But there's another benefit to pre-comping things. See, I have these arrows, these arrows, these arrows. If I want to change just this one, I have to find these specific 12 layers out of 36 that might be in weird orders depending on how you duplicated it. And then I have to change all the animations of all those layers. If you do it in a pre-comp, you can actually take this one, duplicate it here, move it over here, and then remap one of these. So then you have that. Notice that this one is a lot faster. Also notice that it goes away. That's kind of another little tip we'll sneak in here. Uh, in After Effects, for some reason, when you remap things, the last keyframe, if this stuff doesn't actually extend, it for some reason will treat it like the keyframe boundary is here and it will show nothing. So, Take all of this, move it down an extra frame, go back to where you were, and now you see it stays there. That bug is really annoying. All right, so the next big mistake. This one is huge. Don't put tutorials in your reel. It's fine to watch Video Copilot. It's fine to do the tutorials. It's fine to like watch Grayscale Gorilla and Motion Works and all sorts of stuff. I watch a lot of those also, but I watch them for ideas on how to work and how people do different things and for alternate uses of stuff that I never really thought about. But I don't put those things in my reel. You should never do that unless you like rejection. But here's a quick little story that kind of illustrates this. One day at a studio I was working at, 
the creative director comes in with all these DVDs of reels that people had submitted for a job opening. He's like, hey, what do you guys think of these people? So we're looking at it. We're like, yeah, oh, that's nice. That's nice. Okay, cool. Oh, this, this guy's not bad. Then about 30 seconds in, Andrew Kramer, video co-pilot tutorial. Straight up in there, not much changed. And we're like, yeah, this, this guy probably doesn't really know what he's working on because he, he pretty much just copied this tutorial and threw it in there. And the creative director's like, oh, okay. Threw that one in the trash. And the sad thing is that he put a couple more in and pretty much seven out of 10 of them all had that kind of stuff in it. So don't put tutorials in your reel unless you like rejection. All right, so the next one, and this is this one's kind of big. I don't know if anybody's familiar with like daily renders or something like that, but you see a lot of stuff like this. Maybe you think this is cool. I don't know. I made this in a couple of minutes to just demonstrate this point, but this kind of stuff is not just played out and easy to do. It's visual garbage. I mean, it just... It's so prevalent. It happens all over the place. And if you put this in a reel, nine times out of 10, people are just looking at this like, oh God, not that again. You don't wanna be that guy. So the next tip for new animators is to learn expressions. A lot of times I'll go into like forums and stuff and I'll see people talking about how they don't understand expressions. And you know, not everybody's a programmer. I know not everybody will understand like super complicated expressions. However, there are still some simple ones you can learn that will save you a lot of time. For example, if you wanna take this block and you, you know, you have its motion, both of them move to the center. If later on you're like, man, I like that motion, especially like if this is like a cloud or something like that, a lot of times you'll be like, oh man, I like that motion, I like that speed, but I want it to keep going now. Well, if you're doing it this way and you're gonna do the figure it out method, you can kind of move down, you know, maybe you, you go to here and you're like, oh, I could just double the distance and stuff, but if you really want it to keep going off screen, you can move that over and then you can kind of look at the points here and, and kind of space it and, you know, try to get that all exact and whatever, but you know, you're gonna delete here and. That's gonna move, you know, maybe you need it to be absolutely perfect. You could do all this, even if you don't need it absolutely perfect, you could do all of that, but you could also just hit option, click on here, type in loop out, put a thing here, continue. And now it will continue forever. No adjusting, whatever. It takes like two seconds. There's all sorts of little expressions like that that will save you time. If you can open this application and make an animation, you can learn this. All right, so the last point, play around. There are so many things you will figure out just by playing around. Try to copy something that somebody did, figure out how they did it. Don't put it in your reel, but use that knowledge, put it in your toolbox so that you can build stuff in the future. Play around with effects, see how things stack, tick boxes and effects that you don't understand. Use all sorts of warps and displacement maps. Set a goal for yourself to make some sort of effect. Even if you don't figure out exactly how to do that, you might find something else that you didn't know. And remember, as with anything else, practice makes perfect. If you know any new animators, share this video with them. All right, guys, I am Joe from Workbench. If you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments down below. And make sure you follow us on workbench.tv for more great tutorials. I'll see you guys next week. Bye.